All right. The last problem type that comes out of chapter 8 is two-dimensional collisions. And so we're going to see two different examples here where in both cases the equation that we're using is still the momentum conservation equation, but we have to write it down separately in x and separately in y. And so we need to be aware of that as we're setting the problem up. So for this example, we can start by drawing the picture. So we have the three kilogram block moving initially at four meters per second, and it's about to hit the five kilogram block. And that's the before situation. And afterwards, we don't know what the five kilogram block is doing. We do know that the three kilogram block is going up at an angle, three meters per second, and there's a 50 degree angle here. So we can clarify a couple of things right away. First of all, this is directly to the right, so we can have it be an x velocity. And this has a piece that is directly to the right, as well as a piece that is pointing upwards. So we can make a list of the given information and it's a little bit longer of a list, but I want to make it really clear out of every single thing that we could have information about, there are going to be 10 total numbers that will show up in our problem. The mass, the initial velocity in the x direction, the initial velocity in the y direction, the final velocity in the x direction, and the final velocity in the y direction. All of that for the first mass, and then all of that for the second mass. And it's worth making this list so that we can fill in the information that we have and know what information that we're solving for. I know we're all expecting me to just poke myself in the face with the marker. Okay, so let's go through what, what we have. This will be our mass one, the three kilogram block, and this will be our mass two, five kilograms. For the initial velocity in the x direction, this is four meters per second to the right, so we'll call that positive. For this one, it's not moving, so that's zero. For the initial y direction, there is no up and down component of an arrow that points directly sideways, so this is zero, and that one, since it's still not moving, is also zero. Then if we look over here, the x component of that final velocity is three cosine 50 degrees. This is an unknown for us. For the v1 final in the y direction, that's gonna be three sine 50 degrees, and the final velocity in the y direction is unknown to us. So we have this list of given information, and it will help us sort through things as we look at the two different equations here. There's the x equation, and there's the y equation. So let's write down the x equation. Keep in mind that there are some longer subscripts now, but fundamentally it is the same kind of equation we were working with we were working with from the start, where this time we're just looking though at the x direction. So we have three times four. The math part here is actually quite small if we do all of the hard work in the setup. So three times four plus five times zero equals three times three cosine 50 degrees plus five V2FX. All right, so this left side is 12. Then we have, oops. we have 5.8 
and we also have 5v2fx, so we'll subtract 5.8. We get 6.2 equals 5v2f. So if we divide both sides by 5, we will get that v2fx is 1.24. Because it came out positive, that means it's to the right. Okay, now we look at the y direction. So little bit short on space, but we'll make it work. So m1, v1 initial in the y direction, plus m2, v2 initial in the y direction, equals m1, v1 final in the y direction, plus m2, v2 final in the y direction. So this is 3 times 0, plus 4 times 0, equals 3 times 3 sine 50 degrees plus 5 v 2 f y. So this is 0 on the left. And this here, the 3 times 3 times the sine of 50 degrees, that's 6.9. I'm going to subtract that from both sides. So now we have minus 6.9 equals 5v2fy. That way, right away, we can divide by 5. And we will get that v2fy is negative, that means downwards on our page, 1.38 meters per second. Now, we are not quite finished here, okay? Math-wise, there was not a lot of algebra involved. We plugged in the numbers, we subtracted 5.8 from both sides, we divided 5 on both sides. We plugged in numbers, we subtracted 6.9 on both sides, we divided by 5 on both sides. The only tricky part of the two-dimensional collision problems on the math side of things is we do have to go back to our trigonometry because these are two components of a final triangle. So I'm going to erase this um, startup information. You can always rewind the video to go back to it. But what we have now is that we know that this 5 kilogram block moved uh, is moving with 1.24 meters per second of motion to the right and 1.38 meters per second of motion downwards. So I won't put the negative sign because that's what the arrow is indicating. So what we need to finish this problem is this V2 final overall motion, the size of the velocity, and we need this angle. So now we're relying on that understanding that we have from chapter 3 and beyond of um, trigonometry. So for this long hypotenuse side, we're using Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so to solve for it, we're going to take the square root of 1.24 squared plus 1.38 squared. And notice I do not use a minus sign here because Pythagoras does not care about up and down or side to side. So we get 1.86 meters per second. So that is the final size of the velocity for the 5 kilogram block. And then the tangent of the angle where I've drawn it is the opposite, 1.38, over the adjacent, 1.24. And so the angle is the arc tangent of that. So when we plug all of that in using the inverse tangent, the arc tangent, we get 48 degrees. And that is the direction. 48 degrees plus a picture is all we need. Otherwise, we would have to say 48 degrees 
south of east, and so a picture's easier for us in general, but I just want to make sure that we need to have an indication of where that 48 degrees actually points. And so let's note a couple of things on this one. First of all, the 1.86 meters per second, um, with that speed, it's not necessarily obvious to us at the start of the problem whether that should be bigger or smaller than the speed of the other block because the angles make it harder to predict what it will look like. What we can be sure of is that if we look at the initial situation on the slide instead of here since it's not here anymore, there was only momentum to the right, which means that it makes sense to us that we are also still moving to the right. And if we look at the initial situation, there was no overall momentum up and down. So if this three kilogram block moved up, then the five kilogram block has to move down. And so that should make sense to us as well. We will see a second example in the other, um, in the remaining example for chapter eight where um, the two blocks stick together, and we'll figure out how that works too. But overall, the process is the same as this one. We set up the problem. We had that whole list of all of the possible numbers that we might have. And then we looked at the x direction, and separately we looked at the y direction, and then put them back together in a triangle. So make sure to compare this example with the next one, example 8h, to see the similarities and differences there. I will see you in the next one.